we're back in Ho Chi Minh City now with more of my exclusive interview with Secretary of State John Kerry and his take on those alarming developments this week out of Syria, where Al Qaeda appears to be gaining ground, taking over warehouses full of aid meant for American-backed moderate rebels. The major news out of Syria this week, the U.S. has suspended non-lethal aid because Islamist rebels took over a warehouse. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, it happened because there's a certain amount of infighting taking place within the opposition. And this is the nature of the beast that has been unleashed by Bashar al-Assad, who probably is feeding some of it himself because he likes to try to play... Uh, the card that he is the better alternative to these extremists. So there are some indicators that he's even fueling some of that. The problem is you have some radical Islamic elements there. So what's the next move? Well, there is a more the moderate opposition has been united up until recently, and we believe they still can be united. We are aiming towards the Geneva II conference, which will take place uh, in January, in the latter part of January, we are committed to trying to bring people together, a strong representation of the opposition, together with the Assad regime representatives and with maybe 30 or so other countries, and all try to work in the same direction, which is to get a political settlement out of Syria. When can you start the non-lethal aid back again to those moderate I think very rebels? quickly. We, we've what, already what are you had, waiting for? Well, we've already had, we've already had some... Uh, proffers to have the warehouse protected and other kinds of things. But I think people want to be careful, have the meetings that we need to have, and make certain we can pre proceed forward thoughtfully. Nobody wants to just fill the warehouse up again and have it taken over again. That doesn't make sense. So we need to make sure of where we're going. But look, this is complicated. This isn't easy. You know, a year ago, before the president started to focus on, 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 on this and figure that we had to accelerate the efforts to get a political solution, nothing was happening except fighting and killing. And, and a year ago, chemical weapons were being used and under the control of the Assad regime. Now, through our diplomatic efforts, we are moving towards a peace conference and you Difficult really think that's is. going to happen next month? We're committed to going. The Russians are committed to going. Countries are committed to going. John McCain <laughs> says, the moderate opposition groups are losing. As a result, extremists are filling the void, and entire sections of Syria stretching deep into Iraq are now effectively safe havens for al-Qaeda. True? Uh, there's some truth. Yeah, there, there, it's absolutely true. Al-Qaeda has greater clout there than it had before, and it's an increasing threat. And it's a threat we're going to have to confront. Uh, the, the, but John also understands that the members of Congress with whom he serves were not willing to put additional money in in order to fund overtly and put money into the opposition significantly. Let's turn to the war we are still in, and that is in Afghanistan. And there's very little progress, it appears, with Hamid Karzai, the president who does not want to sign this security agreement that would allow U.S. forces to remain beyond 2014, making it clear that's what the U.S. wants, to allow troops to stay beyond 2014. Well, the U.S. wants success in Afghanistan. And success means having a, an Afghan arms force that has the ability to sustain itself and provide security to the people of Afghanistan so they can continue on the road to developing their society, their institutions, their uh, health care system, their education, and other things that are happening today. When America went into Afghanistan, Martha, there were about 900,000 kids in school. They were all boys. Today, there are about 7 or 8 million children in school, and almost 40 percent of them are girls. So there's a huge transformation taking place, and, if, if and we, we don't want to try leave to hold those, on to that. If we don't leave those troops there, can you guarantee that young women can still go to school no, over there? No, absolutely not. You can't guarantee anything. I think if, if American forces uh, were not there, I think there would be serious challenges with respect to Afghanistan security. But, here's the but, I believe that Hamid Karzai, uh, either he or his successor, will sign this. 
I think he needs his to successor. Sign it. So it's okay I if said his successor. They will. No, no, no. I said either he or they will, but he needs to sign it. By when? We Give negotiated. Me a date. Let me just we vi- we negotiated an agreement that wasn't in place, by the way, a year ago. Now we have an agreement that's been negotiated, and he has said to me personally, and as as, as recently as a day ago, reiterated through his minister that the language is fine. So we are very close to the ability to move forward, and I believe it will be signed, and I hope it will be signed as soon as possible. Is there a cutoff date where you have to say we can't, we can't leave the Well, there is there. a cutoff date, but I'm not going to get into cutoff dates. I First think it was October, then it was, does it have this, to be by January? No, this needs to be signed as soon as possible, and I think he understands that. How it's, long do you want troops to stay there? Well, that's up to the President of the United States, and it's up to the process on the ground. But the president has already said we are prepared to be there for a number of years going forward in a very different role, a very diminished role of training, advising, and equipping the Afghans. We will not be in combat. America will not be engaged in combat. But it, counterterrorism very troops you want there we'll as well. We will be doing counterterrorism. That's combat. That correct. Well, does it not, not automatically, not directly. It can be intel gathering. It can be... Um, providing information to the Afghans that they act on. Uh, And in some cases, it might wind up being uh, kinetic uh, by American forces. But the point is, it's not day-to-day combat against the Taliban on behalf of the Afghan people. It's counterterrorism to fight against terrorists, al-Qaeda, the Haqqani network, others who are threatening American assets and America itself. You've put so much effort in your first year into Mideast peace. You've got the parties talking, but has there been any real concrete progress on the really tough issue? Yes, actually there has been. But we've agreed not to be talking about uh, what we're doing because it, it, it just creates great expectations, it creates pressure, uh, it, it creates opposition in some cases. If this conflict was easy, Martha, this would have been done years ago. It, it, it's confounded presidents and secretaries of state for 30 or 40 years. And you feel this time it's complicated different. now. Well, I think we're in a different moment now. And, and hopefully the leaders will seize this moment and, and at least move the balls forward somewhat. We're sitting in Ho Chi Minh City. You're a Vietnam War veteran and an anti-war activist after the Vietnam War. How much of your worldview comes from your time spent here? Well, obviously some of it, Martha, but one thing I'm very careful, uh, very, very careful not to do, is see everything through the lens of Vietnam. That would be a huge mistake. And um, it's informative, but it doesn't imprison me. It doesn't dominate me. Thanks very much, Mr. Secretary. Thank you.